So Emerald here on Twitch chat said, for example, even though it's a gacha game, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Blazing is shutting down because it became stagnant. It didn't change, but the company and the publisher won't shut down or die out because they have other games that make more money. Ah, so that's interesting. Well, what, what, what were we trying to say? I'm sorry, I got... We probably read this so, a little late. Uh, what were we trying to say in regards to that? Okay, so... If you don't mind sharing. So, okay, look. It, it ties into what he was saying with, in, before in the chat. Let me read it com- entirely so that way you guys have the full context. Some game companies just don't see that they need a different style to keep their game from becoming repetitive and stagnant. That's why you see game series die out along with the company that made it. For example, even though it's a gacha game... Naruto Ultimate Ninja Blazing is shutting down because it became stagnant and didn't change, but the company and publisher won't shut down and die because they have other games that make more money. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's actually a, a pretty tough topic because gacha games aren't meant to be um, different in any sense. They're meant to be about you picking up your favorite character and just spending money. <laughs> I mean, that's actually the, the pay-to-win difficulty, which we'll, we'll probably touch on later. Um, in, in in its own respect, it's kind of hard. Gotcha games are cheap. They're not meant to do anything other than make you spend money. So, well, you know what? There, we, you didn't really read it in the script, so why not just talk about it right now? Because I wanted to get to the next. All right, whatever. We'll talk about. It. Okay, so I think a good game. I mean, the the problem with 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 that game and a lot of other gotcha games, even Genshin Impact, which Genshin Impact I consider to be the best gotcha game, is. It falls in the predatory system where you always going to feel like you have to buy a better character and spend more money in order to improve uh, how you play the game and how you get through it. It sucks. I know it does. To feel like you have to pay more money to get somewhere in a game. It's unfortunate, but that's just how those get type of games are. The fact that the game is dying out is because, one, people don't like the gameplay that much. They weren't interested in what the characters brought to the table when they got them. And then on top of that, they, you know, Naruto has... I would argue that Naruto doesn't have as many lovable characters as, say, Dragon Ball Z or... My man said characters. Characters. Uh, I would say it doesn't have as many lovable characters as, like, uh, another anime um, and stuff like that. Now, I could be wrong. You know, there's there's obviously going to be the Naruto fans that are going to come out and, you know, uh, defend Eno and uh, 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 Itachi and, you know, Sasuke and say, oh, but what about all these characters? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, but a gacha game is meant to make you like the characters. If you don't like the characters, it's done. In Genshin Impact, like each character, they made every character broken and overpowered in their own way to give uh, the incentive to to try and grab a character and take him through the adventure of going through the long sluggish leveling up systems because they want you to actually pay more money. So if a gacha game doesn't do that, it kind of, you know, ruins the experience now the, the way that they do difficulty in those games is that they, they do the pay to win difficulty they get you in a, they forcibly bottleneck you by not giving you enough materials and stats to to beat the game right then what they do is they um start forcing you into world tiers world tiers and by that what i mean is they start pushing up the difficulty of the gameplay and um, the enemies start going up in higher levels so that you constantly feel like, oh crap, I need to spend money to get more level up material and, and all these things to help you get past levels. But before you know it, you're spending all this money, you're trying to get this character powerful, you're not really getting anywhere and at the, at, unless you spend like thousands of dollars, literally your house, like your, your whole mortgage, you're paying off your whole mortgage inside the game and you're not getting anywhere. Um, and then when you realize that what you're doing is you're literally just going through the exact same three levels with probably a different art design to get to the higher levels for the sake of improving your character and making them look as pretty as possible with the right costume, the right weapon, the right this and that, whatever. But at the end of the day, all you did was just waste money. You, you didn't actually achieve any anything. You didn't achieve anything. You, there's no challenge in it. You're not getting anywhere. There, what did I do to get my character? I just spent a lot of money. It's, it's what Michael's joke from the last game, credit card the game. You know, you're literally just putting in a credit card. You're just whoever spends the most wins. So, that's kind of what sucks about gotcha games. And that's why a lot of games, a lot of those games die because they already made their money. They don't care. And if it's not producing any more money past its original intention, they're not going to support it. So, yeah, for me, my personal opinion on gotcha games, I don't play any of them because <laughs> I think it's uh, they're mostly I don't bad. think it's healthy to support those companies financially. I, I prefer supporting companies that make games with a little bit more thought. 
And to be honest, anyway, when I play anything that's remotely gacha or pay to win, uh, everything always usually feels pretty boring up until like, like everything just feels bad unless you like pay money for the game. Pretty much like it right. doesn't actually feel fun to and, play the and, game uh, unless you pay money for it. So that's not the kind of experience I look out for anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that uh, adding or, or making a game stagnant on purpose or uh, just overbearingly difficult unless you pay for something right. is definitely the wrong kind of difficulty and, to introduce and another, to a game. another issue with, with gacha games is that it's entirely up to the character that you're using. If you have, you're always going to start off with the free to play bad characters to entice you to play new characters. But if you're not getting new characters or working towards them and the only way to get them is to pay more money, you're going to get bored and it's going to become a stagnant experience because your entire experience is based off how your character plays. Which is kind of like what I'm experiencing with, with uh, Genshin Impact. The only difference is that Genshin Impact applied the, the Breath of the Wild model to an extent. So it's fun to go and explore and seek out the, you know, the different little abilities because I'm not just clicking on a loading screen and then going to a new background area to just attack enemies and get loot but no but i'm actually going out to explore we're talking about right, right i'm going out to explore this world now the way that they do the difficulty is the same way that they do you know regular gacha games you eventually get forced or bottlenecked it. well genshin impact doesn't do this but most other games do that they bottleneck you into a into a certain type of world tier to push on the difficulty and make you feel like you're progressing but you're really not you're just spending more money to get there and that's what pay to win difficulty is it's it's literally you just paying more money to succeed it's like you're, you're not beating the challenge for the fun of it. You're beating the challenge with your money. So it's like, how, how fast can I blow my paycheck? That's the that's the joy I get out of it. How fast can I blow this paycheck in this game by pressing buy? And that's pay to win difficult. Just to sum it up, I don't think there's much more to say about it other than it's just you spending more money. And, and it, it, it's it, the game is based on how much money you spend. So, uh, I, I, I don't know if you... Hey there, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Co-op Syndicate. Make sure to check out both the Co-op Syndicate main channel and clip channel to get all of our content. If you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and ringing the bell as well so that you never miss out on any future episodes. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your friends and family, or you could also share it on any social media website of your liking. If you guys would prefer to listen to our podcast on the go instead of viewing the full episode on YouTube, consider checking the Co-op Syndicate podcast out at the Co-op Syndicate dot buzzsprout.com we host the co-op syndicate on buzzsprout and it is available on apple Podcasts, spotify google podcast or anywhere where you listen to your podcasts if you'd like to watch us as we record the podcast live you could actually give us a follow at twitch.tv slash co-op syndicate we go live every thursday and saturday at 4 30 p.m if you'd like to support the channel you could consider subscribing to us with Amazon Prime for free over there. If you'd like to participate in community events and talk to other members of the community, consider joining our Discord, which I will leave the links to in the description down below. If you would like to support the podcast and get rewarded in return, consider pledging to our podcast at patreon.com forward slash co-op syndicate where you can support us at many different levels. There are multiple tiers that offer all sorts of different rewards for the level that you choose to support us at, including Discord privileges, merch, gift cards, and much more. Also, if you would just like the merch directly without pledging to the Patreon, you could buy our merch at merch.streamelements.com forward slash co-op syndicate. Lastly, if you'd like to keep up with Jordan or I outside of the co-op syndicate, you can find us on every social media platform under Michael C. Moore for myself or JG underscore Mark one for Jordan. Thank you guys again. And until next time, happy listening.